Ladies and ladies and gentlemen, today, today, we're talking about K-pop. K-pop is one of the most revolutionary genres of music in the world, and I bloody love it. K-pop, K-pop. I was going to show you guys my uh, limited edition Jimin Funko Pop, and then I discovered that I actually had destroyed the Funko Pop by mistake, so... All I can offer you is a Phantom Menace 99 Collector's Edition Jar Jar Blinks mug, so... I'm sorry, I need to start this video off with an apology. I don't know if I actually like K-pop. Look, I'm an enjoyer of the K-pop genre. I'm somebody that occasionally dabbles throughout it, big black pink stan. But personally, I'm, I'm not somebody that exactly, you know... I don't... I don't really, like, participate in the culture, you know? I, uh... It's just, it's just not for me, but, you know, occasionally I'll watch some of the, um, some of the stuff, you know. As in, like, the music and the, um, videos and documentaries and everything, really. Please help. But no, seriously, K-pop is obviously one of the biggest genres of music on the planet. And naturally, it does have a little bit of a negative reputation because of some little... Little idiots in the fan bases of some K-pop groups, but personally, I've had nothing but positive experiences with the genre of K-pop. Please, for the love of God, accept me. Please. I am... I am on my knees. But naturally so, given that K-pop is one of the biggest music genres on the planet, and there is a lot of groups out there with massive fan bases, there's obviously gonna be a few rotten eggs throughout the fan bases, and today, we are going to be speaking about one of the... Family, but I do identify as Korean. Good example. That bad examples of it. Ollie London. Ollie London is a influencer that I have covered quite a lot during my last few years on YouTube. They, yes they, if you're gonna comment on this video, please be respectful, are somebody that is known for being a little bit too much when it comes to being a K-pop fan. I know a lot of people don't understand me, but I do identify as Korean, and I do look Korean now. I do feel Korean. I don't identify as British, so please don't, um, Refer to me, any media or anyone online as British because I, I identify as Korean. That's just my culture. That's my home country. Now, hold up. I've just uh, had a little thought. Ollie, they may be onto something here because theoretically, via this process, we could actually get rid of Britain. We, we could do it, guys. After all these years. We could be free! YouTube, I do have to say, that's a joke. That's a joke. Please, oh my god, for Jesus Christ, YouTube. Susan, it's a joke. I also identify as Jimmy, and that's my Korean name. And yeah, obviously, it's absolutely palmy. It's some of the most batshit things you've ever seen on the internet. And in the last year, Ollie has come out as transracial. And I do have to naturally say, you cannot identify as another race. You just can't do that. And I don't really think I need to go into detail to why you can't do that. But also, you can't identify as the fifth member of Black Pink. That just, <laughs> it's just, it's just mental. It, and you, I don't, I, I feel like I, I, like I feel like people will want me to go further in detail to why it's mental. But do I really need to do that? Like seriously? But the main thing that Ollie is known for in the last year isn't to do with Black Pink. Obviously, it's to do with their obsession with BTS star Jimin. People that don't say we got married, I've got the wedding certificate here as well that was signed in Las Vegas at the Viva Las Vegas wedding chapel. So yeah, I just want to say we're super happy and thank you everyone for the support. We'll be going on our honeymoon very soon as well. So yeah, thank you. But recently, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sad to announce. I'm sad to announce that they've broken up. They've broken up. Ollie and Jimin, they're not together anymore. They recently uploaded a video titled, It's Over. And the worst part of this, if this, is this video was uploaded on my birthday, the 29th of January, you sick bastard. Why, could you not, could you not at least wait one day? One day? The, for, 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 you had to ruin my birthday? You had to ruin my birthday. You know that I'm a big fan, Ollie. You know that I'm a big fan of this, of this, this iconic relation. Obviously not. Obviously, that I, I, I do have to clarify um, the fact that they are apparently married to an 
a, a, a zooming cardboard cutout is probably one of the more insane things that I've covered on this channel, but alas, it's something that I've covered and it's something that's happened and it's something that we're just gonna have to deal with and put it in the past because today, um, obviously, they've broken up. But yes, since my last video, it does seem that Ollie is on a new chapter in their life. After stalking Jimin for years, getting hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of surgery to look like Jimin, getting married to a cardboard cutout of Jimin, then getting divorced, it seems that Ollie is now on a new journey to where they are now stalking members of Blackpink. And it's getting to the point of where I genuinely believe that Ollie London is on a warning list. I believe that they are on a warning list of every single K-pop group in existence. You go into any K-pop groups like changing rooms, you go into their house and there will be a photo of Ollie London on their wall where it says specifically, stay away from this person. But to get into that new chapter of Ollie's life, to get into the chapter of Ollie getting more surgery to look like another K-pop star, I think we need to first go through the video speaking about Ollie's divorce with Jimin. It's kind of like when you went through that talk with your parents when they broke up with each other and it was one of the most traumatizing events in your history. Ah, oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> I forgot a lot of you have loving parents. Let's get into the video. Giving like major serial killer vibe. <laughs> I'm not even joking. I was editing this and thinking, wait, how did I miss this bit? Hey guys, what's up? A long time I see. It actually looks like they've been crying and they're like actually upset. <laughs> it's like, honestly, you'd think the whole thing is like a joke, but at the same time, I I'm actually kind of concerned that. They genuinely believe that they were married to Jeff. Sorry, let's continue. I haven't been on YouTube for a while, but I just wanted to say hi to you guys. And me and Jimin have actually been going through a lot recently, me and Carbo Jimin. And we have an announcement to make that's really emotional and really sad. And I look a bit of a mess right now, I've been crying all day about this decision. It might also be to do with the fact that you spent hundreds of thousands of dollars trying to change your race from white to uh, Asian. I, that, 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 that may be the reason. But you know, for the last two years since me and uh, Carbo Jimin, we got married, I have received so much hate online, so much abuse, you know, millions and millions of haters. And it's really tough, you know? So the last month I haven't really been active on social media so much. And I've been thinking, you know, maybe everything people say is true. Maybe I shouldn't be married to a couple of Jimin. Maybe I'm being selfish. Maybe I'm selfish, you know? I'm keeping Carbo Jimin to myself when the whole army loves Jimin. So maybe that's not good. So, you know, Jimin, is not happy being with me. It's honestly just like sad. Like it, it, it is sad that somebody has like basically built their entire life around this. You gotta think about that for a second. Every single day Ollie wakes up, they are thinking about Jimin. They are thinking about what can they do next to get a reaction out of the internet. Because that's all this is for, obviously. It's all for a reaction. But it doesn't take from the fact that this is absolutely mental. It doesn't take away the fact that they have done all of these things and got to this point. This person has a family. I, I believe they have friends. I would really like to know what they think about Ollie London. I would really like to know what the families have to say about their relative. But yeah, they basically just go through this speaking about their divorce and how I guess they've drifted apart. I mean, great. Great, um, and there's seemingly a divorce paper there, and honestly, I'm really wondering why am I analyzing a person going through a divorce with a cardboard cutout, but you know, this is what my university degree has done for me. University is a scam. It's a scam. I just want to say it now, and I just want to say it there. But you know what also is a scam? Is this bottle? I'm not even joking. Like, I legally have to say it's not a scam, so I don't get sued, but I've been drinking out of this BTS bottle, and it is not cold. The water's barely been in there for a long period of time at all, and, you know, I, I expect adequate water temperatures when I purchase a bottle, which has told, that has told me that it will keep my bottled water at adequate water temperatures, which will keep me, um, hydrated. I, 
I need some friends. It's sad. I... I'm lonely. But you know, naturally with breakups, you have to find coping mechanisms. You have to find a way to deal with your life. Now you are on a separate journey away from your previous relationship. Just kind of like how my father and my mother broke up and I had to deal with them. So, uh, so Ollie has had to find, you know, like ways to like deal with the, the breakup with, with Jimmy and they are... Uh, They've obviously um, been coping in, an, in in a strange way because Ollie has uh, seemingly made a diss track on Jimin. I'm not even joking. They they they've made a diss track on the person that they've been stalking for years. You're taking the piss now, buddy. You're taking the piss. Ollie London, Korean boy, Jimin breakup song. They've got to be on some form of watch list. They, they, th there's no way, there is no way that the Korean government aren't keeping track of all it. There is, there's, that there is absolutely no way in my mind that they just aren't being watched every minute of the day. Even the British government, I think, are watching Ollie London. Jimin said he loves me every day. Oh, oh. Now I'm eating kimchi all on my own. Whoa. I honest to God really would love to know. Like, I, I, I know that he probably can't speak about these things, but I would just love to know what Jimin genuinely thinks about Ollie London because there is no way in hell that they do not put every single thing that Ollie London has ever done in the group chat that BTS have. I, I, I refuse to believe that they are regularly mocking Jimin in their little group chat about Ollie London because it, it's mental, and honestly, if if I was a member of BTS, I probably would be taking the piss every single day. But I'm not going to continue with this song because uh, I, was it so I just don't want to. I just can't. But yeah, it seems that after this breakup, it's really, really been affecting Ollie. Kind of like how my parents' breakup affected me, Ollie has been doing a lot of crazy shit, like coming out as a fifth member of Blackpink. Since I have come out as gender fluid and come out as the fifth member of Blackpink. Oh, yeah, true. I, I forgot the B and LGBT stands for Blackpink. I want to clarify my new pronouns. They, them, Rose, Blackpink, and of course, the most important one, Korean. Thanks, guys. Hashtag Ollie London. I don't want to sound like one of those incel freaks that have made 600 videos about Brie Larson being the worst human being in existence, but... I do have to say, you can't identify as another race. You can't do that. It's not a thing. It's, it's, it's a complete, utter sham. Please, for the love of God, stop. It's actually extremely damaging, even like, I know it's like, I, I think it's a joke, I think. But at the same time, it, it's such a damaging joke. Ollie genuinely now claims to be transracial, which obviously is absolutely insane, but it's also extremely contradictory because Ollie London has made tweets supporting JK Rowling. I'm not trying to be a dick here, but Ollie, JK Rowling doesn't support trans people, let alone transracial people. And notice how I've categorized those two things into different things. That's because transracial is a category which is a complete joke. It's a complete mockery. It's stupid and it's attention seeking and it does not exist. Whereas being trans is a very valid and serious thing. Ollie's even gone to the point of arguing and debating with people over the identity of being transracial. Ollie recently went on Channel 4 where somebody challenged them over their beliefs of being, I, 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 I guess, Korean now? I, I guess that's what they're claiming to be and the person on there challenged them over this and basically said it's completely stupid and utter bullshit and I'm not going to play the video because Channel 4 will copyright me but let me just play some quotes for you. The woman next 
basically starts off by challenging Oli and saying transracial does not exist and I think it is very, very harmful for us to push the narrative that it is possible to switch races. Which is absolutely spot on. Trans people every single day are in constant danger merely for their own existence, which is obviously terrible, but the whole thing of being transracial does not help these trans issues because it's basically using the flag as trans to shield over the pure insanity of suggesting that you can change your own race. There are some despicable, disgusting, awful, terrible human beings out there that will take any stupid, dumb thing they can to justify their hatred. And I'm not saying it's a valid justification, but they will try to use things like being transracial as a way to justify their hatred, which is obviously still terrible, but you have to acknowledge that these things will happen when there is something out there making such a mockery of real trans issues, they will take that thing and use it to actually attack trans people. And that is genuinely upsetting and genuinely terrifying. Ollie, I'm not saying you aren't trans. I'm saying you aren't switching races. You cannot do that. It's not a valid thing. All it's going to do is perpetuate more and more hatred. But then Ollie responds with saying they weren't happy with the way they were. So I went to Korea and had the most incredible experience of my life. It changed me, gave me happiness, and people have no right to take that happiness away from me. Ollie, usually when you go on a nice luxurious holiday, you go and buy some memorabilia. You know, I went to Grand Canary and I bought a little, little snow globe, you know, a little thing to shake around and never touch again in my lifetime. And it's nice, it's cute, it reminds me of the place that I went to. But there is one bit of memorabilia which you typically don't take home with you from your holidays, and that is somebody's race. You don't go into the gift store and say, oh, I like that snow globe, oh, I like that fridge magnet, and oh, look at that, mum, it's a two for one white privilege. I'll take that with me, thank you very much. Usually, isn't how it goes. Sorry. Ollie, if you want to experience Korean culture, you are more than welcome to. The Korean tourism industry would probably open you with welcome arms. They want people like you to visit their country and experience the culture. What they don't want people like you to do is to try and become them. You're not Patrick Bateman. You are Ollie London. Please, please, for the love of God, remember that. You have spent £150,000 or more on surgery to look Korean when you could have just went on Deliveroo and bought some kimchi. But then going back to the debate, the woman next to them then makes a fantastic counterpoint to Ollie by saying she can't sit up there and say, oh, I'm suddenly a white woman. And if you as a white person can say, oh, I can be black or oh, I can be Korean and I can't swap and benefit from the privilege that you benefit from, then it's clearly not an equal exchange. And this is absolutely spot on. Ollie can get all the surgery that they want. They can spend all the money that they want to look another race. The one thing that they cannot do, the one thing that you cannot surgically remove is white privilege. It sounds like a joke, but it's actually not. There are so many things that Ollie, as a white person, won't feel or experience when it comes to racial oppression when they're pretending to be Korean because they are white. Now we are going to start to move on, but I do just want to finish this segment of the video by saying, Ollie, I'm going to say it for the 50th million time. You cannot change your race. This is embarrassing. Please stop stalking people. And please, for the love of God, just acknowledge that you're from Luton. But moving on from this, obviously, as I mentioned earlier, Ollie has now claimed that they are a part of Blackpink, and they've even uploaded an audition video where they are trying to join the group. But I do think I have to ask the very understandable question of how the fuck do you afford this? How do you afford all of these crazy things. Like seriously, th there is no way you have this amount of money and you decide to waste it on this shit. I'm convinced that they are like a crypto billionaire or something. And this is just like their side hustle because why are you wasting your money like this? Ollie's insane ways of spending their money is genuinely the first time in my lifetime I've actually experienced something which can be considered more of a waste of money than purchasing an NFT. That's how bad this has got. Well, 
at least... I mean, at least there's something worse in my life than my parents break up now. But after this, things just kind of start to kind of go down the same path as it went with Jimin. And it does start to just in general get a little bit weird. When Oli, they uploaded a video onto their YouTube channel where they basically claim that they are seemingly transitioning. Which is great, you know, that's absolutely fine. Obviously, I don't have an issue with that. But... There, I don't know why I said it like that. Obviously, I wouldn't have an issue with it. But then, then they claim to basically be stealing the identity of another human being. So I just want to come out and say that I now want to join Blackpink. I'm auditioning for YG. I'm doing a cover of How You Like That. Because I should totally be the fifth member of Blackpink. And my new name is Rosé London. Rosé is now my bias. Lisa was my bias before. Now Rosé is my bias. So I want to look like her. So I've just had all my surgery to look like Rosé. I still love Jimin, but I want to look like a girl, a Korean girl, just like Rosé. And I want to be the fifth member of Blackpink. So if you couldn't take what they're doing here, basically they are stealing the identity of, I, I believe, Rosé from Blackpink, which is is so utterly bizarre it's it, it like it's nothing to do with them transitioning or anything like that it's to do with the fact that they are taking somebody's identity as a human being and using that for clout it, it's it's so unbelievable and again you can say it's a troll you can say it's a joke to get attention but that doesn't justify this that doesn't make it any better like i've had fun laughs and goofs and gaffs when it comes to ollie london but i feel like this is getting to a point of where this could be considered actually dangerous this could be considered actually making a mockery of trans people and it could be considered just in general extremely disturbing. And based on some tweets I found, it does kind of seem that Ollie is stalking this woman for attention and that is just, again, disturbing. To conclude this video, Ollie, I'm just gonna say, please, for the love of God, just, just take a break. Just, just stop. You can love Korean culture, you can embrace the culture, but you don't become the culture. That's where I'm gonna end this. Please, for the love of God, stop before my brain cells melt into six million gallons of brain juice. Thank you so much. I'm gonna end this video by saying, please like this video. I, I'm just tired and I wanna go to bed. <laughs> It's, uh, in fact, I was gonna say good night then. Uh, please like this video. Please comment beans on this video. If you want me to, I don't know, go through all these TikTok, get this to forty thousand likes. Please follow my social medias on iNabba on Instagram, iNabba sixty nine on Twitter, Jedi Nabber on Twitter, iNabba Live is my second channel. It's all there in the description. As you can tell, I'm done. I'm going to bed. Good night. Peace out. Bye bye.